Alrighty, welcome back everybody. It's time for the ES Prime Cup. That's the Esports Prime Dota 2 Cup, an eight-team single elimination tournament as eight of the best teams all in the Western scene are competing for $2,000 in prize money. Started yesterday, it's going to be a quick and easy tournament. Three days of action, and today is where the bulk of it goes down. I'll show you quickly our brackets of what we've actually got in store. Yesterday, we had our first best of one. That was Fnatic up against Menace. Fnatic went for a very fast early push trap, won the game in it came in about 15 minutes, but the rest of the bracket you can see here, Speed Gaming versus the Super Strong Dinosaurs, it's the new team with Snaking, Come With Me, Bambo, Arise, and Mini. You've got Dignitas versus For Sweet Revenge later on today, as well as Evil Geniuses up against Key D, who is, I believe, a Brazilian team who came through the qualifiers, so that'll be our last match of today. Actually, I say our last match, we've got one of the semi-finals today as well, so three of the best of ones here in the quarterfinals, and then one of our semi-finals, that bottom semi-final that you see there. So quite likely we get some good old American Dota later on as well, but we're here live for our first game. It's a super strong dinosaurs up against Speed Gaming. I'm Gods, and I'll be solo casting this first game later on for the day. It's going to be Vikramon joining me, but for now we do have our last uh, our last game for We Play Dota 2 Five going on. For those of you wondering, me. where is uh, the Alliance vs. Rockskis series? It's over on the Beyond the Summit 2 stream, uh, and that's game two time. is being played there. But we have got the ES Prime Cup, which we are going to be casting here on Beyond the Summit 1, and that is Speed Gaming versus yeah. the Super Strong Dinosaur. So we're going to hop right into it. As mentioned already, Dirty it's a best of one, so there's a lot at stake here right off the bat to get off to a good start. You can't really come slow out. We've seen teams in other tournaments in these best of threes lose game one, come back, take the next two games, in convincing fashion. Empire, uh, Empire did against Rock's Kiss. They got beat in game one and then stomped Rock's Kiss the next two games. But you can't do anything like that here. Best of one is very unforgiving. And we'll have back. to see what the super strong dinosaurs have up their sleeves. We've saw, seen this team in Wii Play. So interested to see how, they, how they've how they been playing since getting knocked out of Wii Play. Wii Play, they had uh, only two teams advancing out of each group of five. So I think super strong dinosaurs had like Na'Vi as well as Evil Ten Geniuses in their group. Remaining. and had a. It was going to be a very tough way to advance. But for now... They're going to be taking on Speed Gaming here in this quarterfinal. Speed Gaming just getting out of a epic best of three against Team Empire. Empire taking Enchantress. that two games to one, so they're going to be a bit demoralized, Radiant but at the same time, they played their hearts out and had a fantastic series in general. So we'll get ourselves into this draft. The first four bands being the Wisp, Batrider, Naga, Siren, and Elder Titan. No surprises there. These, to me, are probably the most the top four bands in the current, current metagame. Naga, Siren being one of the best supports. Wisp being Wisp. Batrider... Also being bad, right? And Elder Titan, the new kind of flavor, is just oh so powerful. So that leaves heroes like Troll, Visage, Nature's Prophet in the pool. All of Ten those getting snag snagged remaining. up in the early stages here with Speed Gaming. First picking Troll Wallet, in fact. So possibly a hero for Eternal Envy as a carry, but more often than not, when Speed Gaming run this, it's Sing Sing playing a solo Reserve mid Troll time. Warlord. Super Strong Dinosaurs, they uh, retaliate, picking up the Nature's Prophet and Weaver. So they get themselves their off lane in the Nature's Prophet, as well as their safe lane carry. Sometimes solo mid here in the Weaver, but I'd say more likely going to be their safe lane carry. Probably going to be played by, uh, who's actually, I guess the carry player for this team right now is generally, sn well, Snaking's playing mid for this team. Bambo on the off lane. I guess it's Arise playing carry. Arise, actually, Arise has been playing mid with Snaking on carry, so possibly a Snaking Weaver in the uh, the safe lane farming role when we last saw them. So come with me and Mini, the two supports. Mini, uh, formerly of the, the Q-Pad Red Pandas. And uh, we do see a jungle enchantress. So this, to me, is more likely come with me. Here he plays that four position, generally on the junglers, and Minnie will be playing that five si five position support, whatever that might be. So, well, we'll see the Sand King Visage as the support drill for Speed Gaming. They grab the Visage as their second pick. No surprise there. AUI 2000 going to be thrilled to get his hands onto that. One of his favorite heroes he's mentioned on a, a couple of times. And, well, we'll see what he can do here. Super strong dinosaurs. They've got their work cut out for them, in, in my opinion. Speed Gaming... Well, they're, they're a team who are in just some great form right at the moment. I should have worn my Ten dinosaur shirt. Remaining. It's uh, this, when the super strong dinosaurs are playing. I do uh, I do apologize to Five them as I wasn't wearing remaining. it. I'm their, their biggest fan when I'm wearing it. But today, there's no dinosaur shirt on. Speed Gaming, they've got their Reserve two supports time. here. Sand King, Visage. We do see most, I guess, we'll be looking towards Pile I Die on the Sand King and AUI on the Visage. Depending on, I guess, maybe they swap that around Radiant if uh, they're going to put AUI on a four position Sand King. Maybe he has to play it, even if he prefer to be on the Visage. For now, though, the dinosaurs, they pick themselves up a Rubik. So they grab their other support here. And uh, we'll see Mini handling the Rubik here. So oh, Rubik yeah, Enchantress yeah. plus one. They do have the ability to go offensive trial if they really bad. want to. Nature's Prophet can easily handle a 1v1 matchup in the safe lane or in the middle lane against a bounty hunter. Even Weaver does pretty well there. If they want to put Weaver mid, Nature's Prophet safe lane and have some kind of Rubik Enchantress plus one trial lane, 
they could look to shut down whatever speed gaming are up to. Although speed gaming Ten with a visage sanking remaining. have a very very strong uh, try line of their own. So maybe Five something that super strong remaining. dinosaurs don't really want to contest. When you go for those offensive try lines, generally you're doing it not to but that win your offensive try lane, you never really, it's very rare kind of occasion that an offensive try lane actually wins the lane. It's more sort of to break even and force your opponents to leave their Radiant supports on lane. And the, the benefit of keeping the supports in that try lane means that your other, the 1v1 lanes going on don't get any support help. So if you have an advantage in both the 1v1 matchups, that's what you want to go for an offensive try lane, even if you don't have an obviously stronger try lane, just because you force the... The team Ten that's going for the safe trial and their supports can't move off the lane. They can't help the solo lanes, and you win two of the three Five lanes just from one v one matchups. And generally, having your one v one matchups win is more important than winning a trial lane because those are the heroes that Reserve get a lot time. of experience, a lot of farm early on. Your trial lane heroes, well, they're sharing the experience yeah. three ways, so they're the less influential heroes. And we'll Dire see exactly what pick. super strong dinosaurs want to do if they go for some sort of an offensive trial lane with this. They ha do see a queen of pain band out, so it looks like speed gaming expecting just a standard weaver safe lane. Most likely in the trial lane with a Nature's Prophet offlane. Nature's Prophet is one of the better offlane heroes uh, in the current metagame with the ability to just contest the pool so much, block them from spawning using treants. Very annoying to go up against. So, Speed Gaming, they have the uh, offlane Bounty Hunter, which will be uh, Bone Seven's hero. So he doesn't get his bat right up, getting banned out very early on, not getting something like his Clockwork either, but Clockwork Five was still in the pool. Remaining. They opt to go for the Bounty Hunter instead. It looks like they want to play for a mo more early game. S early game centric, I guess, ganking lineup with the track gold coming into play. They get a troll warlord as well, which can really just rush their opponent's very tanky hero and then the visage to uh, give them the burst damage they need to actually set up those kills. So, well, we'll see the uh, last two picks coming out, one for each team as super strong dinosaurs have first grab. As I said, they've got the options here. They aren't really forced into Puck. into doing an, uh, a safe lane trial lane. They could have picked up Radiant maybe a, a trial lane carry here if they went for Weaver mid, but they go for Puck, so. Looks like we will be seeing Arise playing a solo mid puck, Weaver for the safe lane, most likely for snaking, and then the offlane Nature's Prophet. That'll be your sexy bamboo hero. So speed gaming, no more or less what like they're most likely going to be up against, although there is always a chance of uh, having the Nature's Prophet safe lane and the offensive tri lane using the Rubik, Weaver, and Enchantress. So I guess that's the one thing speed gaming Ten have to take into consideration remaining. with this last pick. They're probably okay having Bounty Hunter 1v1 against the Nature's Prophet, Five Although, as we saw in some remaining. of our earlier we play games, it's sometimes a lane where a bounty hunter can struggle as far as getting farm. But hey, he Reserve gets his levels, time. he can come back using that track gold to start snowballing out of control. So, one more pick for speed gaming, and we're looking towards, I guess, an envy hero, depending on if the troll's going to be his hero or if they want a mid hero. Life Sealer got banned out, so it looks like the dinosaurs are expecting something for envy here. Life Sealer banned, Weaver already taken. Most of envy's go to heroes aren't in the pool, including the Storm Spirit that he likes to play as a safe lane carry. So, no Storm Spirit for him either, and you know, Speed Gaming not really rushing this pick here. They're going through all their bonus time, thinking things through as far as the options go, and are not quite sure exactly what they want to go even themselves, it seems. Well, this is just uh, our first of one, uh, first of three best of ones for the quarterfinals of the ES Prime Dota 2 Cup here. Remaining. And uh, this one here is going to be the, the winner of this going up to verse Fnatic, which Five is going to happen tomorrow. Remaining. So... Uh, we've got the three best of ones tomorrow, and then we've got uh, the, the the bottom semi-finals today. Sorry, the three best of ones today and the bottom semi-final uh, today. And then tomorrow we've got the semi-final between the Fnatic and the winner of this game, followed up by the grand finals, best of three, depending on who makes it that far. But for now, Speed Gaming, last pick, a Phantom Assassin. There's your Eternal Envy hero. I quite like this. The, uh, the evasion helps a lot against the Weaver as well as the Nature's Prophet. Uh, in general, it's like a relatively tanky hero. can also fight early. And that uh, doesn't really worry too much about getting ganked. You've got a blink strike to escape. So I think this here actually fits pretty nicely with Speed Gaming's lineup. I uh, can get a lot of early kills. If you go for the Bassering, you can always take early towers just by having a tri lane versus an off lane Nature's Prophet. So definitely uh, potentially very annoying with this Phantom Assassin pick. It does put Sing Sing mid, Bounty Hunter into the off lane. Ten very expected remaining. lanes coming out from Speed Gaming, but that's nothing to be worried about. But the dinosaurs, a Five bit less predictable. Remaining. You don't know if it will be that offensive tri lane. You don't know if it will just be. Uh, a, a safe lane Nature's Prophet, or possibly just the safe lane trial lane. So we'll hop ourselves into our game, our first game for the ES Prime Dota 2 Cup for today. Introducing our two teams over on the Radiant side. It will be Prepare Speed Gaming, battle. or Speed Gaming International as they've uh, tagged up. And it's going to be Bone 7 playing the Bounty Hunter with the Fast Boots build. We've got Pylai Dai, the support player, playing the Sand King. Eternal Envy, Kazami Kazuki playing the Phantom Assassin. Then we've got Sing Sing on the Troll Waller with a poor Mad Shield. Tango and Southpaw, and then finally AUI2000, he's going to be on the Visage.
just with some early game sentry wards and well the sentry wards on him basically say hey they're most likely going sankling tri lane oh i don't like this speed they're running up to the high ground here snaking's there waiting but immediately the dinosaurs decide to back off they see five heroes they only had two or three well, it is super strong dinosaurs who had the vision advantage, and they use that not to fight, but to get the hell out of there. They did not want to have anything to do with that lane. Ward's coming down. They're going to, I believe it looks like, block this pull as well as get some much-needed vision. Mini immediately sentries it. Oh, they see it. I think they see it, at least. There's pings going down. We'll introduce our die team all of a sudden now. Can they... They need high ground vision. They need high ground vision. <laughs> They're struggling. There we go. Mini gets the vision he needs, standing over here, and then the Enchantress is in range to attack it, so... They deward the jungle for Come With Me. So we'll introduce this super strong dinosaur. Snake King gonna be handling the safe lane carry Weaver. Enchantress being played by Come With Me. Mini gonna be playing the Rubik. Solo mid has arrived on the puck, and then finally in the offlane, it's Sexy Bambo. Sending out some creams early on, gonna try and uh, make sure he can try and block this pull, so... Well, Sand King gonna stun two of these Treants. Right off the bat, we'll have to see if I can actually get the block off. So got 15 seconds, so more treants coming in. He got the double treants spawn, and it looks like this will be impossible to stop. As uh, this this pull camp will be blocked at 30 seconds. The question is, can they block it any any further than that? AUI 2000. Well, he finds one treant, but the magic bush spawn is being used, and this should block off two camps. He does do so. So two camps get blocked by this treant. Nice start from Nature's Prophet. As for our top lane, it was Bone Seven. He's pulled a creep wave all the way from behind the tower. Is he taking it to the ancients here, or? Oh, Bone 7, this is cheeky. The Ancients are there, but it looks like he's going to go all the way into his own jungle. And, well, Minnie's like, well, no one's at top lane. He has the lane ward down, but nothing actually there, so... Oh, no, he's not going He's not going to his own jungle. He's going all the way back down to his creep wave. So if he meets it with another creep wave around here, he can deny some creeps, get some last hits. That's a nice way to start things off here. He has got no stout shield, so he's taking a bit of damage from this creep wave, but, well, he's waiting for this creep wave here to meet up, and then he's going to have himself a nice... Creep wave on creep wave action in between this tier one and tier two tower. Nothing out of the ordinary there at all. Well, looking at some of our other lanes, it is uh, does look like this pull has been blocked at the one minute mark. So, speed gaming unable to use these supports as sort of in a jungling role, which is annoying for them. They're still level one. They're unable to really do a whole lot here. And well, Bambo's got tons of clarities. He got pull two clarities, had two of his own, and he's going to keep blocking this pull. It looks like not backing off, not going into into the jungle to uh, start farming away. He wants to be as annoying as possible, knowing that. Speed Gaming love to get levels and farm on their support, so... Looks like he's going to stay at bottom lane. Doesn't actually have mana for more Treants. These Treants have got to get to that pool, have got to block it. It looks like one is sitting there waiting for the time being. There you are. He's trying to stack this neutral camp, it looks like. Now going to get to work on this Treant. Can he actually kill it in time? Nope, it gets blocked again, so... Sanking just rotating Double off the damage. lane, realizing he can't really do a whole lot. As is the Bounty Hunter. Leaves top, comes mid, and with a, uh... With a Shadow Walk plus Janata, he gets the slow coming into play. This could be dangerous for Arise, who has uh, not quite got his bottle up just yet. It will be coming out soon, but for now, Bone Seven going into the jungle, trying to scout out Come With Me, see what he's up to. And it looks like he will find Come With Me. He's got one point in the heal, as well as the uh, Dark Crow Waller needs to use something early, and Come With Me gets brought down. Double damage on Bone Seven, even with the Centaur Stun, and he had the perfect creep duo. In Snare plus Centaur Stun, but the damage output of a double damage. Bounty Hunter with more than enough, and Speed Gaming get themselves a first blood in a very unexpected way there. They roam through the jungle with the sa the support Sanking who started off bottom, and the Bounty Hunter from the offlane, and get a kill. And that was with level 2 heroes. Or, I think Sanking was maybe even level 1 still. So, Bounty Hunter with level 2, Sanking like level 1, maybe level 2, and they get a very early kill. Enchantress is so squishy. Looks like Bamboo at bottom lane almost actually got brought down there. He was very low on HP. Sorry for missing that one, but Orb of Venom early pick up for Envy. It looks like he's trying to get aggressive, trying to go for some kills. Now they come back in. They want to block off this big camp once again. Of course, come with me some problems. Middle lane, alright. Oh, gotta be careful. There's a bounty hunter here as well. The slow's coming out. They may just get this kill. Waning Rift and Sing Sing gonna be forced back as the bottle arrives for a rise and he's gonna heal himself up, start bottle crawling. Sing Sing himself. Well, his bottle's on, on route. I see the Kree leaving from the base, and looks like just some Bottle Crow versus Bottle Crow at the mid lane. Four minute room will be important for the two players, but if they're not getting it, they'll just send that bottle back for another trip. Sexy Bambo still has not left this bottom lane. He wants to keep being annoying, and well, I don't know if this cat maybe spawned at three minutes, or I, it must have spawned at three minutes, because he's got his creep waves on, 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 well on through, so it looks like the three minute spawn came, and then the 4 minute one, not going to come, because he's going to block it using this little magic bush. 
as I say that, this big camp here has not spawned, so I think he's got that magic bush block every single time, so maybe EUI just found another way to pull the creep wave on through. Illusion Rune gonna spawn up bottom. It looks like uh, the Puck is gonna use his entire bottle, which he just got back. Get up the Illusion Rune. That gives him a slight edge in the middle lane, although with that said, he's only leading the Troll Warlord by a couple CS. Sanking, Pilai Dive, rotating top, realizing the Bounty Hunter can't really lane all too well here. Snaking actually went for it. We saw uh, earlier the, the level 1 Dust as a support, yeah, as, sorry, as a carry player, getting a Dust himself and really wanting to be able to kill the Bounty Hunter in the off lane should he come out. And now against the Sanking, this helps as well. Bounty Hunter TP's back top, Snaking still being very aggressive. Up to 1600 gold if he wants to go for that Radiant's minus build. He's almost got enough for attack. it. Oh, they're going to dust here. They want to go on Pilai Die, but Rubik Mini, he's taking an entire creep wave. The stun going to come down from the Telekinesis, made to save his life. Not going to do so, but does get the kill on the Sanking. A one for one trade at top. Bone 7 needs to be careful. He's still dusted up. The dust now expiring. I'm up to see if this tower does go down. There's a big creep wave here. Snaking going to Shikuchi on through. Bone 7 getting very low. Snaking. That creep wave, get it off you. Radiance Tower going down here, Sanking keeping back in. Sneaking for the back off. Is there dust or sentries? Doesn't look like it, but here comes the Enchantress. Have they got Vision of Bone 7? The, the sentry walk behind the tower, but they lose Sneaking to the Sanking. Burrow can come with me in trouble now as well. It looks like the slow being applied here. The Sanking going to get the kill. Was that a bounty hunter with Orb of Venom? Yes, it was. I was like, where did that Orb of Venom slow come from? And well, meanwhile mid lane, Dream Call goes down, it looks like Puck wants going on Sing Sing here, has he got enough damage? It doesn't look like it, the Waning Rift actually going to miss, as does the Orb, Arise! Oh no, that is not what you can afford to do against Sing Sing here in the middle lane. Enchantment sends a little Harpy in to do some harass here, but it's too late, it expires, and Speed Gaming find themselves with a big, big advantage. They didn't get the tower denied, the tower went down to the Siege Creep, it looks like, at top, but they got multiple kills on the Diving. Weaver as well as the Rubik. Rubik now with one death, Weaver with a single death, and come with me with a second death behind that T1 tower at top. That is just too aggressive, getting too overzealous there. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Has got this spawn now, so six minutes into the game, he's probably getting pretty happy that he can actually get some jungles and levels. AUI, very rarely do you see him level two at six minutes in. This is unheard of for this guy. This guy, he treats his supports like carry hers with how much time he'll spend getting farm and getting levels. He loves to, to just jungle away for days, and this is how you can shut Dyer's him down if you're a super strong dinosaur, but... They, the problem is, they may be doing a great job of not giving speed gaming, uh, farm, farm and levels on their supports, but the rest of the speed gaming heroes doing really well. PA 43 CS, troll up to 38, and while the offlane bounty hunter, while he's not farming well, has gotten kills, has really gotten himself some decent levels. He's already up to level 5 with phase boots and an orb of venom. His early game start is absolutely fantastic. And even Pylai die, level 6 on Sanking. Oh, Weaver Snaking wants to go in here, but there's a Bounty Hunter. Have they got the detection they need to go for this kill? It doesn't look like it, but Snaking, he's gone out. The phase boots burst damage, bring him down. He didn't actually have a Shikuchi. Shikuchi was on cooldown, and they punished Weaver there. Snaking getting too aggressive. He went for a Midas, and when you go for this Midas build, you cannot afford to die. Even when your Midas isn't on cooldown, this is just so costly for you. Oh, Rubik and Puck, they want to go on this tanking. The orb in the orb damage doesn't land. The dinosaur's just not playing the cleanest of games here. Arise missing the orb damage. He used the ethereal jump too early and, and Pilot died not taking any damage. Even if it hits, I don't know if they go for that kill, but it's still just some costly play coming out. As Weaver, Shikuchi's back in immediate Midas. The dust. That was, I was about to say, was that dust for the Weaver? It looked like it was a dust looking to kill off the bounty hunter, but he's already hiding in the side shop here, so more time and gank ganks wasted as Come With Me has not really found the openings he's been after. Meanwhile, middle lane, Sanking's rotated. He's level 6, now level 7. Oh my gosh, this support Sanking. Talk about AUI very rarely being this far behind. Level 2, level 3, it's 6-7 minutes in. Well, this is what you should be doing when you can't pull. Pilot Die is finding kills. He's been involved in all five of these speed gaming kills at 8 minutes in the game, and he's found himself level 7 as a result. You don't have to rely on farming your jungle to get levels and farm as a support, and Pilai Dai is showing a different way of playing the modern day support. Well, that's for Envy. What's he going for here at the bottom lane? Picks up a Ring of Health, so we could just be seeing a Battle Fury build coming out from him. Using that Stifling Dagger just to get himself a bit more farm, and for the time being, he's happy just to keep on trying to trade farm for farm with the PA. Hasn't gone for Myers himself, but we've seen Weaver die multiple times in that top lane. Oh, Bone 7. He's scanning out this entire jungle routine. And he's level 6 with track. He's waiting for the Sanking to roam in. And Sanking has an epicenter. They need this Dark Troll Ward to cancel that epicenter. Oh, he gets the stun off. He's not going to actually go for an epicenter. Didn't need it. Easy kill the Enchantress. Bambo. 
He may go down as well. Here comes Sing Sing. Oh, sorry, not Sing Sing. It's Eternal Envy. He's rotated all the way from bottom lane. He wants to come for this kill. Nothing to stop that TP. First hit, crit. Look at that studio RNG. Envy probably knew that crit was coming. He's like, look, guys, I've got a crit on my next right click. I'm going to come TP here and try and get a kill. But he left the bottom lane for, for AUI. I think they realized AUI is so far behind on levels and farm. He needs a solo lane. So Pierre going to rotate towards top and... Well, there's no sentries, there's no dust to get the kill here on Snaking, and I love that they used Battle Trance there. Not that they didn't actually do anything with it, but they thought, hey, if we if we get this Sanking Stung on the Weaver and have a Blink Strike in from the PA, the extra attack speed could have almost got them the kill there on Snaking, but Snaking preemptively used the Shikuchi. If he didn't use that Shikuchi, he may have died if Envy got lucky and got a kill there. Oh, me and my bottom lane. Bounty Hunter. Track kill, it looks like, gets brought down onto the Rubik. He gets he gets picked off at bottom, and Speed Gaming now up 7 kills to 2, just 10 minutes into the game. Sing Sing finds a regen room, going to make his way back towards mid, where... Well, it's actually Sexy Bamboo now, taking this middle lane. Now, 10 minutes in, doesn't have your Midas, but that's kind of what happens when you do you doesn't... He didn't go into the jungle, he tried to spend more time just contesting the pull, and as a result, you have a very low-level Visage, but at the same time, the Midas has been slow and drowned dramatically. Sing Sing. I don't know about this TP in from Sexy Bambo. Have they got the damage to actually get this kill? Sing Sing? Well, oh, Epicenter. What a play coming out from Pyolite Eye. Brings down the Enchantress, and they're not done. The Dream Call's going to keep him in place for a bit longer here. Rubik showing up as well. Sing Sing, he's still alive. He pops a Magic Wand. He's got a Regen Rune as well. Needs to use it soon. He's going to pop it and heal himself up. Meanwhile, on the sidelines, it's Sexy Bambo bring fought down by the Sand King. Over in the jungle here, it's going to be a Courier taking a lot of damage, and Sing Sing's healed himself up. He's going to get the kill on Mini. This is an absolute disaster for the dinosaurs. Oh, Puck blinks onto Sing Sing. There's your Stifling Dagger. They've got the slow. Telekinesis. The stun does land on both the two heroes here, but the Whirling Axe is going to cause Snaking to have a huge mischance. He may just have to time lapse out, but he hasn't actually got time lapse. Oh, Dust going to find Snaking. The Spire Strike not going to land. Snaking now gets himself to safety. Has another Shikuchi. Also has his Midas up. Needs to use that as soon as possible. But it was a two for nothing trade. And they didn't even kill. They didn't even kill Sing Sing. Sing Sing got so low there. Saved himself with the help of the Sanking. Sanking getting an amazing epicenter Bio Strike off, and Sing Sing uses his regen and comes back to the fight. Gets some more kills for his team, and Speed Gaming get themselves Dyer's up further and further. They're now up by 3 to 4k gold here, and possibly looking to extend that. Oh, Battle Trance being used here to help out Boeing 7. He's just going to get a solo kill. Almost didn't need the Shrooken, only needed it at the very end there after the Sprout. The timing of these battle trances so well, it reminds me of like your Nature's Prophet, who using his ultimate only for kills, not just using it to farm and just push creep waves, which you shouldn't be doing in the first 10 to 20 minutes of the game, but using this battle trance whenever speed gaming go for a kill. There's just great synergy and teamwork coming out from this team, <laughs> including AOI with his familiars, his cheeky mic his cheeky micro here, something he always does. Controls the runes, now gonna farm out the enemy jungle here, using this little spot where Radiant's you can kill these you can kill these neutrals without actually taking damage. He's going to uh, just take out the uh, easy-to-kill Blue Ogre. These things have too much HP and aren't even worth uh, worth the trouble. So he's going to bring his familiars back for the time being. But Speed Gaming now up 11 kills to 2. The experience lead is what's really impressive. 7 to 8k experience this early into the game is colossal. The 4k gold lead's nice and all, but the level difference is absolutely crucial. We look towards all their heroes hitting level 8+, plus, except for the Visage, who's got level 6, which is all that really matters. Maybe the level 7 is also desired for the uh, maxed out soul assumption, but for the most part, super just not looking all too strong right now. The minus on the Weaver just doesn't seem to be paying off, and that's where this gold lead feels like it's even bigger early on, because minus is not a good early game fighting item, and well, that Ring of Health for Envy, he went for a very early game fighting item, actually picked up a Vanguard one of the least bought items in competitive Dota. We actually have a Vanguard coming out. Dyer's Possibly the least bought item. Attack. As well. Sentry Ward down at the bottom lane, sneaking in trouble. He's got a time lapse here. Is he going to use it? He goes back into the Sentry Ward here. The Familiar Stun is there, ready and available. Needs to drop them soon because AUI is getting chased down by the puck. One stun, the second. Not going to actually land here. AUI drops a soul assumption before going down. Is he even going to go down? He gets the kill and survives this one. 10 HP. What a play coming out from Speed Gaming. They turn it around at the bottom lane. Phantom Assassin getting another kill for himself, and Envy is now getting very, very far. Pile I die up to level 10 as well. This is a support sand king with boots, bottle, 1400 gold with a magic wand, and hitting level 10 at 13 minutes into the game. He's almost one of the high he's the highest level here in the game is level 10, and your sand king's level sorry, he's level 11. Your sand king is level 10. Meanwhile, Bounty Hunter gets a solo kill on the Nature's Prophet, not for the first time. Bambo's having such a rough time.
in the jungle, anywhere he goes. The bounty hunter's just finding him and getting solo kills. Now speed gaming start to take down towers. They get the tier one middle. They're defending their side lanes. Oh, PA. Is this going to be a solo kill? It looks like it may be. Come with me. He's got a TP out. Where's uh, AUI? He's got familiars maybe to resummon, but come with me isn't even going for this TP out. There's your familiars resummon. Now come with me. No chance. He could have TP'd earlier. Was he short? I don't think he was even short on mana. Here comes the Weaver. Snaking going to show up. Maybe look for the kill on AUI 2000. Familiar damage is there, but Snaking does get a bit of revenge here at the top lane and looking for uh, Envy as well. Mr. Kazami Kazuki. Not going to be a kill. Meanwhile, there is a kill in the middle lane. It looks like Sing Sing, with the help of the bounty hunter, kill off the puck, and that is a track kill at that, so... Problems. Are, problems just getting bigger and bigger for super strong dinosaurs. Envy does not worry at all about the Weaver Harassi. He's got a Vanguard, he's got phase boots. He can just tank for days here. Also has the support of those familiars. Meanwhile, bottom lane. Bone 7 scouts out the Rubik as he does the Nature's Prophet. Oh, they saw him. Immediate Sprout TP out. That Prophet did not waste any time. He was scared. Scared for his own life. This bounty hunter has solo killed him too many times as it is. Now Sing Sing going to come in and farm this with some axes, it looks like. Sing Sing with a fast phase, lads, and the item pickups just increasing for speed gaming. The drums on the the, uh, the bounty hunter. Visage with a uh, medallion. The lads on Sing Sing. Phase plus Vanguard on the PA, and that's a PA with 2k gold on top of that. And then finally, Pylai die. He's getting close to a Blink Dagger. You're Sanking, support Sanking, at 15 minutes in, is going to be level 11 with a Blink Dagger as well. That is just holy moly. A lot of fun. Mirai still trying to get that uh, Blink Dagger of his up, and there's a Shadow Blade completed on the troll. So not just of lads, but a 15 and a half minute Shadow Blade. And then maybe think about engaging. Stifling Dagger not going to get dodged here by the puck, deciding he wants to save his phase shift. AUI. What's getting stolen here? Soul Assumption, so a nice little steal for the Rubik. Gives him a lot of extra burst damage, but here comes the initiation. He can turn around and throw those Soul Assumptions, but he may be dead before it really matters. And Mini on the run. Looks like uh, Pierre going to retreat here. Does have the Vanguard, so very hard to kill him off. And Sanking. Blink Dagger now up. He's got it at 16 minutes in. Boy, is that a scary amount of fun. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Sing Sing caught the very end of that one. Went in for a solo kill with the Shadow Blade. Finds a Nature's Prophet. And while Arise is nothing he can really do in reta retaliation here. Team Speed Gaming are just applying pressure in all three lanes. They went for the kill mid on the Rubik. They didn't get it. Doesn't matter. They went for a kill bottom of the Nature's Prophet. That kill they do get. So they're finding kills and pressure somewhere on the map every single time. Is it Sand Speed Gaming with a very, very good grasp over this game one. Well, I say game one. This is a best of one. The super strong dinosaurs will be eliminated with a loss. He has 7.5k gold lead and over 10k experience lead going the way of speed gaming. That is problematic. Uh, Bambo. Deciding the safest place to farm is the enemy jungle on this cliff. That is when you know you're in all kinds of dire straits. Snaking. Gonna be forced back. He went back for a drums here. And, you're going, and also, when you're know, going for these cheap, cost-effective items on Weaver, you're in problem. You're in a lot of tr trouble because you want to get the, either the Lincoln's BKB and then go for your damage item. Generally, the Desolator. Maybe against the PA, you want to go for the Monkey King Bar to deal with the evasion. But as it is, he's gone for a drums. Maybe now he'll just he's skipping the BKB Lincoln's and going for a more late game damage item. But oh, mid lane massacre as Sanking catches catches them by surprise with the Blink Dagger. The Soul Assumption plus Familiars are there to prevent the puck from TPing out. Envy's on the chase now, trying to look for this Enchantress. They'll get the Enchantress with the stun. There's your Stifling Dagger. Come with me. No way out. No way to escape. Easy kill for Envy. And into the Roshan pit he goes. He say, look, I've got Helm of the Dominator. You've got Vlad. And we are so tanky. This should be an easy, easy Roshan. There's Battle Trance in five seconds. Weaver's going for a tier one bottom tower. It looks like this tower will be brought down one way or another. Sanking, not going to be here in time. He Radiant's tried to come in, get Snaking, but the tower already down. But meanwhile, Roshan is taking a fall. Look at this damage. The Cossack Finale doing extra damage to Snaking. He is so low. Snaking, Sanking's got a blink stun. Oh. Doesn't know which way he went. Meanwhile, Roshan goes down. P8 picks up the Aegis. And well, this is getting very, very drastic for uh, the, the dinosaurs. They're in a world of trouble here. They still haven't got the blink dagger on their puck. Nature's Prophet has no items past the Midas. And they're just getting swarmed upon. Well, Mimal mid lane, Sing Sing. Does he get this solo kill? He really wants to go for Oh, they smoke on top of an invis, Sing Sing. Have they got detection? It looks like they've got sentries as well as does. Sing Sing could be in a lot of trouble. He's got no backup. He's going to try and maybe fight his way out of this one. Pops the battle trance. He's going for the Rubik here. 
Oh, he's going to try to run out of this one. If he can, the dust is going to expire in a second. Oh. If he dodges that orb, he may have actually survived with the dust expiring. I guess the Shadow Blade was about to uh, end, end as well, but Sing Sing almost bought enough time there. Meanwhile, Envy, he's going to walk directly into Come With Me here. I, does he run? Does he fight? He TPs. The Centaur being killed off, there was nothing to stop the TP. And... Oh, Bone 7 showing up this time. Goes directly on Mini. The Sentry Ward comes a bit late, and Envy actually cancels his TP. Okay. I didn't see that one. I stopped watching him, assuming he was going to TP out. Meanwhile, the bounty hunter does get brought down with the up of the sentry. Or Envy wants come with me here. Radiance does he go for this kill? He's got the ages. Attack. Looks like he's just going to run away to the safety of his own familiars. There's a lot of farm waiting for him at top, but the TP not there anymore. It looks like Sanking's maybe going to be the one taking that farm instead. Blinks on over. And well, speed gaming. They give away uh, two unnecessary kills there. Just getting a bit too greedy. A troll Radiance pushing really far up on his own. Bounty hunter getting caught in the enemy jungle. Trying to help out Envy more than anything. So that kill, more excusable. But as it is, Puck now finally has a blink dagger for the dinosaur. So 20 minutes in. I have to see if this blink can be used to set up some good kills and fights for them. They've got the Weaver up to 3k gold now almost as well. And uh, it looks like Speed Gaming trying... Trying to maybe pressure these towers a bit more. They've only taken one of these outer T1 towers, so they've still got a lot of work to do. And so it is top lane. Sing Sing not showing himself just yet. Sentry Ward gets put on the ground as well. In preparations maybe for a Weaver TP top, but Sing Sing decides he's had enough being patient. He's just going to show himself and go out and get this T1 tower. It looks like Dying SSD not in position to stop this attack. going down. What's Bambo match to farm up? He picks up a Staff of Wizardry. I imagine going for a 4 staff here just for some extra mobility. Got to use that Midas. There's your 4 staff recipe. and He's TPing all the way down bottom. Decides there's so many heroes top that it should be safe to farm bottom. And he's right in thinking so. PA. Near the Roshan pit. And then the rest of the speed gaming team is up at the top lane. Radiance middle tower oh, they see the puck. Attack. They also would see this Blink Dagger here. Dyer's Bone seven looking for uh, someone attack. else to maybe go on. Oh, immediate blink out. Bone 7 gets a track down, but if that Shadow Blade hit came, Puck could have gone down because uh, his blink would have been on cooldown from the damage output. We were getting killed. Puck. PA. Eternal Envy. Have mercy, please. Solo kill on the Nature's Prophet. Top T2 tower gets picked off, and all SSD were getting out of that was a T1 middle. PA. Is he actually going for this? No, he doesn't have vision. Doesn't find the Rubik just yet. He may find Enchantress here. Come with me. Got to be careful, son. Radiance the Age is still up on Envy, so he can get as aggressive as he wants. And with a Yasha, he's got Come the mobility. On, Max out, untouchable. Look at how slow Envy hits. <laughs> That's with a Yasha attack speed and everything, but they just don't have the ability. They need just nukes and burst damage to kill the Enchantress. Enchantress is still very squishy. 800 HP only. Oh, speaking of squishy, Bone 7 taking a ton of damage there. He gets brought down, but the PA gets a revenge kill on the Rubik, and now PA in a bit of trouble. He does have the Aegis still. Sanking, Epicenter, Burrow Strike, blinks in, gets himself a couple of kills, and now the Weaver, the only one surviving. Looks like he's going to be brought down. Hasn't got time left, so he needs a couple more nukes. Stifling Dagger is there. The Whirling Axe is not going to land. Snaking getting another Shikuchi off. Sanking, Burrow Strike lands. Great perceptive play coming out from Pile I Die. He's been the MVP, in my opinion, for this speed gaming team. Four kills, three of them going to the PA. Eternal Envy, have mercy, please, and he's going to find more. He's going to find Come With Me. Sanking actually getting the last hit for this one. Ultra kill being denied from Envy, but this is looking all of a sudden like it could be GG any second now. Up to about a 10k gold lead in the experience lead, getting over 15k. Speed Gaming just don't really have anything... Uh, Anything left to give to this SSD team, and SSD need anything they can take right now. It's it's Bambo once again on this cliff, deciding this is the only place he can farm. Can't farm his ancients. Well, that's where Sing Sing is. Can't farm his jungle. That's where Eternal Envy is. Can't farm the lanes because that's where heroes are, and you'll get ganked. So he decides, okay, enemy jungle, let's go. Envy now still has the ages. Sanjin Yasha completed. And this ages seems to just be never expiring. He's got another minute on it, but. He's made great use, constantly fighting with the uh, the Aegis up. So love this PA set of his. PA Hood. It looks like a, a Robin Hood PA version. Well, female Robin Hood. And uh, Sing Sing in, in his own jungle. He's managed to pick up a Yasha of his own, so even more mobility going the way of this speed gaming team. And oh! Looks like Weaver and Nature's probably actually teamed up to kill Boeing 7. And get the, the dust applied on him and get another kill. Crystallis was the item of choice for snaking. I'm not a 
big fan of this because you kind of need the MKB. Not only is there PA evasion, but there's whirling axis which causes you to miss. There's a lot of things which could, which basically say, "Hey, man, oh envy, Aegis expired." He gets the crit though. Eternal envy doesn't care. He's one one v three here, and then suddenly he looks around and is like, "Oh crap, guys, where'd my Aegis go?" He's gonna fight. He's gonna try life to his way to victory here. Even hitting creeps, he arises in all sorts of trouble. Envy gets himself a double kill. There is no mercy shown today. He wants come with me as well. He'll get come with me. It's a triple kill for envy. One v three, Dota, no problem at all. Ee Sama, he's. Putting words into the devotee's mouth here as he is just destroying SSD. What a play coming out from him. Snaking to the shop. Is this going to be the ultra kill for Ie Sama? He's man fighting. He's looking for the crit. He needs to be careful. The beetle lowering his armor here. The evasion RNG as well. Can Envy do this? He's going for the kill. He's not going to get it. Sanking shows up too late. What is that blink? He blinks to the high ground. Oh, Envy says, Where were you, my minions? Where were you, Sanking? I needed that fire strike. Meanwhile, the bottom lane, it's the Troll Warlord looking for snaking here. It looks like he time lapsed back bottom or TP'd in. Whirling Axis, he needs some Miss RNG. Look at the evasion! Impetus doesn't get dodged. The dust was there, it looks like, and Bone 7 trying to turn this one around. Speed Gaming now just swarming the front lines here. Puck comes in. Is there a coil? Coil on cooldown. Waning Rift in the orb, hitting a couple heroes here. Bone 7 just going to TP out. Sanking. Oh, three seconds to a Burrow Strike. Epicenter's up as well. He goes for the blink out. Fire strike to the high ground. Arise knows where he is, though. Nice play by Arise. Gets the waning rift. Sanking gets brought down. Speed Gaming getting a bit too excited here, it looks like, early on. But they're just... They're taking fights in three different locations. NV 1v3 at the top attack. lane. Troll Warlord going for some action at bottom behind the T1 tower, which is still up. 29 HP on it. Needs to get denied in a second as uh, Spambo actually going to disconnect from the game. Maybe look towards a pause in a second. Yep, snaking. Drops a pause, but 32 kills to 10. What a bloodbath this game has seen all of a sudden. We'll uh, take stock of exactly where we are now, but... I mentioned Weaver with a Crystallis going for that Daedalus. It's, it's not going to do anything against a PA. In PA Evasion, it's 40%. Whirling Axis is 60% of it, 60% mischance. He really needs an MKB. Puck has got the Blink Dagger, not much on top of that. Then you've got your Nature's Prophet, just the 4-star picked up. Enchantress going for a mech here is completed soon. That'll help a decent amount against this PA. The Untouchable, as nice as it is against physical damage, there's so much extra attack speed. Blink Strike giving extra attack speed, the Sanjin Yasha, and then of course the Battle Trance from Sing Sing. Speaking of Sing Sing, he's almost got his Manta style. He's got his Shadow Blade, Vlads, and Yasha with 2.8k gold. Bounty Hunter, completed BKB, and Visage, well, 200 gold away from an Aghanim Scepter. Oh dear, oh dear. And, uh, and looking at the scoreboard, we can see Envy, 10, 1, and 5. That one death to his name. He's the RNG god this game. Making plays happen on his own. The experience up to 20k. The gold advantage, 12, 13k for this speed gaming team. Things are just not looking up at all for SSD. It's not just Envy you've got to worry about. It's, it's a tri call lineup. You've got Troll, who's hitting hard and doing a lot of damage, and Bounty Hunter with a BKB has to be dealt with. He's solo killing heroes like Nature's Prophet. The Rubik as well. 700 HP on Mini. He cannot stand up to this Bounty Hunter. This is going to get really rough all of a sudden. We do see an Unpause coming out. Looks like Sneaking decides, hey, we're ready to go. And uh, Speed Gaming, SSE getting back underway. This is the ES Prime, the Esports Prime Dota 2 Cup. For those of you just tuning in, it's a best of one quarterfinal match. $2,000 three day cup, so it's just a small, quick and easy cup. And for these teams playing only just a, a best of one and two best of threes, the so semi finals as well as grand finals best of three to win, I think something like twelve fifty for first place is a pretty good deal for them. And right now, Speed Gaming looking to make a statement, although, oh, Bounty Hunter. Drops a track, he just wants to... Oh, he's just turning this one around. Bone 7 gets sprouted, and the physical damage may be enough. He needs another Shadow Walk or something, but he hasn't got it. He gets brought down. Sexy Bambo forced up in for this one. Pays for it with his life. Meanwhile, Eternal Envy. No mercy shown to come with me. The RNG God is back. Gets a 1k crit. And he's not done here. He's looking for more. He's going to move his way towards the middle lane, where AUI has found, found Mini. And Mini getting brought down by the Familiars. The minus armor from the Medallion, combined with the Familiars, more than enough to get the kills that speed gaming need. Now that I think we look towards them marching down that middle lane, trying to end this game fairly soon. Oh, Highlight guy needs to be careful at bottom. Snaking has a dead listen. That's a lot of damage output on him. The evasion from the PA is always nice against it. But these other heroes, Sanking, Visage, Bounty Hunter, not going to be so fortunate and have that same luxury of evasion against Snaking here. 
Uh oh, snaking. Blink virus strike. Is it in range? It is. They get they get an easy easy kill on snaking there. He shouldn't have gone for that TP. He was TPing in front of a troll as well, so he could have even gone for a bash with a battle transfer. As it is, oh, envy. That T1 tower, which was on 29 HP for so long, still had not been denied, and Speed Gaming get themselves even more gold going their way. They went and pushed the tier 2 bottom tower, but they're not even trying to end the game. Sanking just TP top. He wants to kill Bambo, it looks like. He's hoping Bambo keeps pushing and he can go for an epicenter ulti, because they're showing 3, 4 heroes bottom, and Bambo playing making the smart decision he's not going for a counter from the top lane oh now he is though bottom tower oh no pilot is going to get him the trap's being set there's your stun epicenter he can just straight up tp maybe mech tp oh four stuff as well four stuff tp he's gonna get a oh, just get away meanwhile rubik dived in the enemy base envy no mercy today for uh our, our rubik poor mini he's had a rough rough game that's his 10th death hitting the double digits and now we see the tier 3 tower being brought, brought down Lad's aura, battle trance. Got all the damage in the world to do this, as well as the triple from those coming from AUI 2000. Another jump in coming from Envy. Solar Sumption goes flying from so far. Bamboo's still going to be okay from, from this one. But meanwhile, Rax is harping brought down. Puck just blinks in, trying to stall things up here. Blink after. Envy. Bash. Okay. Bash crit. Easy. You've got so much RNG that can proc, something will proc. And he's hitting absolutely everything. Envy not done. Diving enemy found. It looks like Nature's Prophet goes down an enemy base to a soul assumption and bug. Something did not go right, apparently. Arise isn't pleased, but meanwhile, it's speed gaming. Just diving the enemy found and getting kill after kill. There's your team wipe. GG comes out. Speed gaming 43 to 11 in 29 minutes. That was decisive. That was a big, big statement coming out from speed gaming. And this SSD team have had some decent results on the plate there. A team of rejects, so to speak, in that they've got teams, these players who are all teamless, but some very experienced and top tier individual players. They've been having decent results in We Play Dota 2, but here in the ES Prime, the Dota 2 Cup, they do not have the best game one result. They get brought down by Speed Gaming, and unfortunately for them, this is a single elimination eight team tournament. So that puts Speed Gaming onto the semi finals, where they're going to be taking on Fnatic, which will happen tomorrow. So Fnatic versus Speed Gaming semi final, that sounds like an absolute blockbuster, but for now, it is Speed Gaming eliminating the Super Strong Dinosaurs. We've got two more matches coming up. Oh, th three more matches, in fact, coming up. We've got a best of one between uh, Stay Free as well as For Sweet Revenge. And we've got Evil Geniuses versus, uh, I believe it's KG, Kig, something like that. A Brazilian team who made it through the qualifiers. And after that, we've got our semi final, which will be the two winners of the next two matches. So possibly an EG versus For Sweet Revenge match, possibly EG versus uh, Stay Free. So. Three more matches today, two best of ones in the quarterfinals and one semifinal, which will be a best of three, guys. Thanks everyone for tuning in on Beyond the Summit. We've got more ES Prime Dota 2 Cup action coming up after a quick break.